Hey guys, welcome. Uh, today we're going to be opening a booster case of M19 for the store. If you guys see something that we open that you want, know that you can pick it up here locally uh, at Level Up Games in Knoxville, Tennessee, because that's where we're located. Come visit us. You can find us on the Google. We've got the Google. Uh, and yeah, so I'm gonna try to open as much of this case as I can uh, before we open. So here's our first box. This is the middle box. I don't know if, uh, if you're keeping track at home of which box I open. This is the box in the top middle. So there's that. Oh, and I guess here, we'll do this. This is the case that I just opened. Here, you see that? Yeah, yeah that's the case. It's got this little stop sign that says, if this has been tampered with, you send it back immediately. Stop! Um, so, yeah. And we've got our sweet card sorter here. This thing's amazing. I love it. We're a small operation here at uh, Card Shop Talk. So, uh, I'll be opening one of these today. Uh, and then we're going to try to open another one on Friday uh, with the illustrious Bobby. So, yeah. Uh, probably gonna be a little bit messy with the camera today just because we gotta do stuff. Here's our box open, and away we go. And now I'm gonna be adjusting things as we go along just to make sure we get everything down. And today we're gonna we're gonna go a little bit quicker because we've got to go through a whole case, so I probably won't be paying a lot of attention uh, to anything. But the rare! Oh, we got a foil, uh, foil force. So first rare of the day, Dejan of Wishes, feels bad man, Dejan of Wishes is uh, probably not a good rare. Uh, pretty good and limited though, 4-4 four, four flyers for 5 uh, are very good and limited. Also Wizards of the Coast loves Gutter Snipe, but that's that's for another that's for another day, that talk is for another day. Uh, and then, if anybody's curious how I'm separating the cards out, which I know you are, I know you're very, like, how does Steven separate out his cards? Um, the answer is by common, uncommon, and land. And also, there's a slot for the token there. Ooh, let's get that down a little further. Um, ooh, Death Baron. Now, this card, this card was a good reprint, Death Baron. Uh, I think everybody's been relatively pleased with the, the Death Baron reprint. Also, I was talking to a drafter the other day because we were excited about the new draft format. And uh, so, everybody is aware of Skeletal Archer. I don't think I pulled one yet. I don't think. Did I pull one? Oh, Skeletal Archer, when it comes into play, it does one damage. Uh, just one damage, y'all. Well, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, one damage when you have death touch is lethal to a creature. Kills it. So then it's a poisonous skeletal archer. Flavor win. So you can flavor win, reliquary tower. It's not a flavor win, but it's a great card. Remorseful cleric feels bad. Uh, and an angel token. I think we already talked about how good the tokens are in M19. Um... I'm a, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of the tokens in M19. So yeah, um, there's a there's a lot of cool... Oh, Nick Wallace! Yay! All right. This card is like really high right now, and I don't know why. So uh, if you know why, chat, if you know why Nick Wallace is really high, the you know, Vanguard shiny, um, let me know. Oh, the the, uh, the, the token thing. That, uh, that doesn't always... Does that always happen, or does it only sometimes happen? Who knows? I certainly don't know. I don't know things. I'm not a knower of things. It's not my job to know. All right. But yeah, uh, draft format for M19. There's a lot of really cool uh, draft strategies. Um, Wizards has done, especially in recent years, a really good job of making the booster packs draftable. I like Lapless, Dragon Queen. And I think the art on this, if you can get the, uh, if you can get the art for Lapless, Dragon Queen... Um, that'd be a really sweet thing to use in a DD and d campaign, because, like, look at that chick. She's like, fire! Foyer! No pun intended. Pun intended. Actually, I take it back. I intended the pun. Um, yep. Yeah. So, this is something that we always do before a release, is we try to open the Dracanosaurus! Yes, I love this card. Hey, guys, in case you were wondering, that's a 10-10. <laughs> uh, we always open, um... Uh, a case or two, sometimes maybe even three, depending on how desirable the cards are. 
Um, and that's something that we've taken to doing as a card shop in recent years because people want to buy singles on release, uh, which is completely understandable. Some people enjoy the thrill of opening a booster pack, uh, as do I, as I do. Um, and some people uh, do not, and they just want to buy the cards they want. So by opening a case, we kind of also hedge our bets. Um, and, you know, like, I don't know, especially especially with how Magic is nowadays, when we're opening a case, we're not really hoping to make a whole lot of money off of it. You can, you, you have to work for it. There's you, you have to be like creative with what you do with kind of getting rid of bulk uh, and things like that. But um, this dragon is cool. Look at how cool that dragon is. Uh, but like, it's not really easy to make to make your money back on opening a case, unless you get lucky, or you open good things, or if you're, you know, if, if you plan on playing with all the cards, then you definitely make your money back. Um, if you draft the box, and then you end up using all the rares, and things like that. A Johnny's Last Stand. I don't know about this card. It says, whenever you, a creature or a planeswalker you control dies, you may sacrifice it if you do create a token with flying. And then whenever a spell and ability controls because you discard this cards, if you control a planes, create a, an avatar of flying. Which, so, the if you control a planes part, I don't, you know, this, I feel like it wouldn't be that much more powerful if you just said, if somebody makes you discard this, you get a 4-4. Four -four. Um, but I guess it makes sense, because you could throw it into a deck that doesn't have planes. I don't know. I don't know. They wanna, I guess they want to reward you for playing a But what if your opponent goes first, and they thought sees you, and then they get rid of the card because they're playing a discard strat, and then that feels bad. I mean, it feels good for them, but it feels... So, Essence Scatter, I'm so glad that they reprinted this card. Blue needed, like, a halfway decent counter. Um, it's not that great. Counter creature spell. But uh, it's sure to make people angry. Ah, Vivian Reed! Excellent. And a foil cleansing note. So each box normally has like one to two foil rares. So this is one of our foil rares. That's gorgeous. That's really good looking. And then uh, Vivian Reed. You may look at the top four cards of your library. Uh, you may, re may reveal a creature or land from among them. Put them in your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of the layer. So that's, that's a good ability. And then destroy target artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying for neg three is amazing. And I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so, I count that as a win. Vivian Reed. So that's our first plane for the box. And we're not too far down, by the way. We're not too far down on this box. So, so that's a good sign. It's a good sign. Oh, and uh, thank you for the host, Severo. Do appreciate. Do preach. Fountain of Renewal. Hyromancer's Cage. I was, I'm glad they reprinted Diagraph Cool. I don't think Tribal Zombies is going to be really great unless they do something crazy with the Return to Ravnica. Return to Return to Ravnica set. Um, if they continue with their trend of like we're entering a tribal standard format, then it could be cool. Also, this lady has a vulture hat and it's fabulous. We already talked about that though. If you were watching last time, last time on Card Shop Talk, uh, best card was definitely. Or not best card. We just talked about the vulture hat. Maybe it's the best card. I don't know. It could be the best card in the format. I've been wrong so many times. I've given up. I've given up on trying to be right, guys. Make a stand. Maybe I should make a stand. <laughs> Patient rebuilding. I don't like this card. <laughs> oh, this card is good, though. Um, I was talking, again, talking to a drafter, somebody who drafts a lot. Apparently, when you play this card in draft... Um, you pretty much win uh, because it gives you, it puts them on a clock because you're only playing with 40 cards. It puts them on a clock and it puts uh, you at a card advantage for the rest of the game because whenever they mill lands, which are the most common thing in your deck of one type, you draw a card. This is pretty good. Meep, 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 meep. Electrify, great draft card. Double cast. Double cast. Ooh, Resplendent Angel. Absolutely, I will take it, yeah. All right, so our Mythics have been pretty so solid so far. We've gotten Vivian, Resplendent Angel, and Nickel Bolas uh, out of this box so far. And we're, we're only like like nine packs down or something? I don't know, like this is crazy. So we're doing pretty good so far. 
Uh, and on to the next pack. Again, guys, I'm going to try to go really fast here. So if I'm skimming over the commons and the uncommons, it's because we're going to... Ah, there's a Skeletal Archer! Death Baron Synergy! And Draft, you play Death Baron, and then you play this guy on turn four. It curves out! And you can kill something so good! All right. Um, but we're, anyway, we're not going to dwell very much on the comments and uncommons, sorry. Uh, and that is because we uh, we have to open a whole case before I have to open the store. Um, we may or may not accomplish that, which is why I've labeled this part one. Because if I'm unable to do to open all of the packs before uh, the store needs to be opened, I, of course, have to open the store. And then I will go back to this possibly later in the day, maybe when Josiah comes in to relieve me. Um, this card is going to look sweet in foil from what I hear. Metamorphic Alteration. You can also um, Metamorphic Alteration a like a walking ballista or something like that and make a creature a 0-0 zero, zero and kill it in blue, which is neat. I think that is neat. Uh, yeah, so there's that. Lightning Strike at Uncommon. Sure, why not? I mean... Spit Flame! Uh, I was talking to some Commander players and they were saying Spit, Spit Flame is going to be really fun in the um, in the Dragon EDH decks because it is recurring single target removal. And Wizards of the Coast, if you're watching, and I know you are, um, make more dumb recurring removal spells for Commander. Uh, because Commander, there is a dearth. There, dearth? I don't know. There is a lack of single target uh, Removal. Had a good time of pre-release. I'm glad you had a good time of pre-release, Subro. Excellent. I'm so glad you were able to make it, and I was able to put a name to a face. And uh, again, I will say, I, I really do appreciate you guys, uh, or you, watching uh, our channel, because we definitely can use all the help we can get. Uh, Johnny, both I and Johnny welcome you to the stream. And I don't like this card only because I think the art is dumb. So if you're the artist for this card, it's very well drawn. I just, I think that face is dumb. So whoever was in charge of that decision to put a dumb face on a cool sword, you're dumb. You're not dumb. You just have different tastes than I, and that's, and that's okay. That's fine. Severo, you don't have to identify yourself online <laughs> if you don't wish to. Uh, Surge Mare, but we're all friends here. I like Surge Mayor. Surge Mayor's cool. Desecrated Tomb. Uh, draft Weekend's coming up, by the way, guys. And you get a special foil alternate art version of Desecrated Tomb. And uh, it is pretty sweet. Da -na -na -na. I just talked to Billy about getting our, our chat to show up on stream. That way, when we export it to uh, YouTube... People know who I'm talking to. There's not a skeletal archer! I love the art on this card. I love the flavor of it. He's a skeleton and he shoots a guy. Oh, so good. You can shoot a planeswalker with him. How good is that? Uh, Death touch doesn't matter when you shoot a planeswalker, though. The more you know. Vine mare. More horses. Open the graves. When a non token creature you control dies, create a 2 2 black zombie creature token. That costs way too much mana to be good. Again, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of times, if a rare costs more than four mana, it better be really good, or it's not seeing play. Also, chat, forgive me, uh, I'm charging my cell phone at the moment, so I can't see your all's chat close up. So I'm looking at the screen. Stitcher Supplier, I like this card. When it enters the battlefield or dies, you put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard, uh, which is really good for any kind of like reanimator strat. I hope uh, Standard Reanimator uh, becomes a, 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 a tier one deck and standard because reanimator is my favorite thing. Supreme Phantom! And a foil of Gargoyle Sentinel. This is a reprint from Innistrad, I think? I don't like this card. It's foil, though, so there's that. I gotta go faster, guys. I apologize. I'm gonna go a little faster here. Boop, 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 boop. Common, uncommon, rare, mentor of the meek. This goes into tons of cubes, and other than that, it's bleh. <laughs> people put it in, people, they're always saying, like, hey, this goes in our cube. Like, put this in. But even when I play the white weenie strat, um, I end up not playing that card in cube. It's too slow. It's a 2-2 two, two for 3. Be better. Be better. Aether Tunnel. Look at that guy. Aerial Engineer. Herald of Faith. 
and the biggest middle finger to uh, tokens and uh, target spells. <laughs> Amulet of safekeeping. And then a foil havoc devil, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, oh yeah, sure. Oh yeah, don't you know. I am also thankful for the Reclamation Sage reprint. And Elvish Clan Collar. I, I think we the last time we opened one of those, and I was actually really excited because that is a good card. Elvish Clan Collar is neat. And who knows, we may get some Selesnia Elves, uh, and there may be tokens, because it's Selesnia, and they may all be Elves, and then, you know, a card will be really great. Otherwise, it's going to be gra garbage. Oh, um, so as per a request, and I will announce this, I'll probably announce this today, but if you're watching the stream, you get to see it first. I'm going to make a Liliana's Contract Challenge uh, for FNM. The first player to go 4-0, and o, no ties, you must go 4-0. With a Liliana's Contract deck, you cannot sideboard out Liliana's Contract. If you win an FNM with Liliana's Contract, you get a free bundle. So, uh, you heard it here first, folks. The Liliana's Contract Challenge. We did this one time with a Hedron Alignment Challenge. I don't think anybody ever claimed that. Uh, but, there you have it. There's another Rex Sage, I'll take it. And a Valiant Knight. I do like the Lords. I don't like that some of the Lords cost four mana. So, uh, pumped about Lords, not so pumped about them costing four. Uh, take note, Wizards of the Coast, because I know everything. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up Twitch chat here because I wanna know what you guys are saying. Whoop. Give me a moment. Smart man, so girl, I'm sending the whisper. Mentor is insane and limited. I think that's why it ends up in cubes. Um, why why people put it a lot of time in a cube. But I I just personally, whenever I build like the limited strat or whatever, uh, I I almost never uh, end up playing with mentor. It always gets cut. Essentially. I I Woo! There's my echo. Sorry about that. All right, so. Uh, we're going down the line here. Another Skeletal Archer. I think I'll point that card out. Um, also, I like Smelt. I like Smelt. Uh, I don't I don't know why they reprinted it. Uh, we're moving away from artifacts, but maybe we're going to see more. Phylactery Lich. I was talking to a player the other day. They were really disappointed they opened a foil one of these. This is a cool card. Cool art. Um, pretty fantastic. Actually, a beater and limited. Um, but other than that, not so great. By the way, guys, we're going to be doing a lot of product openings here, so if you'd like to watch that, be sure to uh, follow the Twitch channel and subscribe to our YouTube, uh, because we will be opening a lot of things as they come out, or as Wizards of the Coast sends them to us, we'll be opening them here live on the channel. We do some other stuff here too, like D&D &D and things, so be sure to follow. Master Thopterist. I'll take anything that makes a Thopter. I like Thopters. Thopter tokens are cool. You heard it here, folks. You heard it, you just, you, you didn't even hear it here first. You just heard it here. The Thopters are cool. Uh, I gotta get a t-shirt that says that. I'll get my wife on that. Making a t-shirt. Volley Veteran. More welcome. And then Frank Omnipotence. This card looks really good in foil. Um, and fun fact, in Two-Headed Giant, it kills everybody. So, and Two-Headed Giant rules say you have to have a winner, so that would cause you to go to the next game. Um... So there, there you have it. The more you know. All right. Go. Why can you stop reprinting wizards? Listen. All right, wizards, we got to talk. We got to talk. Just make another dumb 6-6, six, six, okay? It doesn't. Just make a dumb 6-6 six, six with trample and make it something else. You don't. I don't care if you want to reuse the same art assets. Is the flavor text different? No. I'm so upset. <laughs> I get it. It's a reprint. Ooh, another Planeswalker. All right. Okay, never mind, Wizards. We're good. We're cool. We're cool, Wizards. We're cool. Liliana, untouched by death. I'm pretty sure at some point she and death had, you know, they may have touched, but like just in a reanimator sort of way. But there she is. She's cool. Um, out of the five Planeswalkers, I don't I don't think she's... Dreadma is one. Dreadma is all. <laughs> <laughs> All hail the mighty Dreadma! It's uh, it's the like the giant spider of standard now. It's just gonna get reprinted and everything. 
There's going to be a, a Dreadmaw Masters. I, I don't know if you guys heard about that. Uh, the, that's the next Masters set. And then they're also doing Dual Decks Dreadmaw. Um, and it's just 60 Dreadmaws. Ah, the Victus. I'm never going to say this card right, but this card's cool. He's Jund Colors, and he like has a giant wall of text on cool stuff he does. Six Hurts for Six for Flying is amazing and limited. He's going to be great in EDH. Uh, if you see standard play, I will be impressed. And that is a cool beast token. I actually haven't seen that. Look at that. That guy's neat. That guy's really neat. Okay, cool. Yeah. Kudos on whoever drew that. Jason Felix. Hey, Jason Felix. I like the beast token you drew. If you're watching, which I know you are. Uh, Salvager of Secrets. That's a cool card. We're not going to talk about the commons. I want to talk about the commons, but we're not going to talk about the commons. We're not. We're just not. Miss Collar. I uh, heard a lot of good things about Miss Collar. That's a good card. I like it. Uh, will it see play in Merfolk? Uh, probably. It's a 1 1. Might see sideboard in like standard play or something like that. I don't know. Da -na -na -na. More of these things. More of these things. Sun Cleanser. Ooh, do you guys see it? Foil Alpine Moon. Look at that. That's really pretty. Wow. Uh, this is an interesting card. Everybody was kind of like, did we really need that Wizards of the Coast? And apparently Wizards of the Coast thought we did, you know. Um, you can shut down a Tron land, but just one, and the rest of the combo I think still works. It's it's weird. It's weird. Um, but yeah, uh, it hoses Valakut, so I guess they perceived a, a up, uptick in Valakut because they reprinted Scape Shift. Uh, thinking ahead, Wizards of the Coast. Shield Mare, cool art. Gutter Snipe, Wizards of the Coast favorite card. Somebody in Wizards, somebody that works for Wizards of the Coast loves Gutter Snipe. And they do, like, maybe they do customer service reviews or something like that. Yeah, that that, that was hot. They do, like, they do internal interviews. What's your favorite card? And, like, Gutter Snipe, I need it to be reprinted, please. I need more. That's that's what I imagine. Gift of Par Paradise is upshifted to un uncommon. Interesting, interesting. Probably for the draft format. Uh, wow, I did not know Paleka Worm, guys, has been upshifted to rare. Feels bad, man. That's another card from World Wake that was uncommon that has been upshifted to rare. So do with that what you will. Uh, I don't really like it when a card gets upshifted to rare. But I suppose it's necessary for drafting and uh, power level and stuff. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows why they do it? I don't know. Wizards is a mysterious entity. Ravenous Harpy is what they used to call me in high school, and uh, and then they called me a remorseful cleric. Both of those statements are completely untrue. Uh, baseless claims. Oh, yeah, the Avatar token is actually pretty cool, too. I like that. So, the reason, in case anybody was wondering why this, this Avatar token is of a Nicol Bolas, uh, it is because in the story... A Johnny actually fights Nicobolus, and uh, to try to kind of like stave Nicobolus off and defeat him, he creates a avatar of Nicobolus to fight him. But I think they retconned like half that story, so I don't know why they made that token. The more you know, Gargoyle Sentinel and Hungering Hydra. There's Valpo X counters on it. Can't be blocked by more than one creature. Whenever it's dealt damage, put that man one. Woo! That car. That, that that's good. That's great. That might see standard play. I like that. Um, you're never going to block it. You're just going to take the damage. That was our first box, guys. We got three Planeswalkers out of that box. Woo! We got three Planeswalkers out of the box. Um, and I think those were... Our, our Mythics were pretty good. We didn't see... So Crucible Worlds, I think, is like super Mythic. I have not seen any Crucible Worlds out of the boxes we've opened. Although I've only opened a couple. Um, box number two for the case. What time is it? 10.56? All right. So if I started this thing at like 10.40, and that took me 25 minutes, I'm not going to get to open the whole case. But we can try. All right. Box number one. Well, we're our Mythics. Let's review. We got a foil. Alpine Moon was amazing. The Victus Asmati. Liliana, which was amazing. Um... Boop, boop, boop. Vivian Reed, amazing. Resplendent Angel, amazing. Nicobolus, amazing. Yeah, I all in all very pleased with the the result of this like box. I think that might have been the 
That's I mean, that's really good. And then that might have been the best buy. So yeah, we're gonna have those in a binder for sale on Friday. We cannot sell them. We cannot sell you boxes. We cannot sell you cards. I can't give you your pre-order if you didn't pick it up last weekend uh, until Friday. It's only one more day, guys. You can wait. Uh, another shield mayor, lightning strike is great, and hey, another death baron. Um, does every does every box just have a first? The first pack is a death baron because because I opened another box on stream and it was a death baron in that box, and then I opened a box and there was a death baron. Oh no, no, no the first one was the of bushes. That's right. Maybe it's just the first row. I don't know. Thud, thud against. This used to be a mythic wind reader sphinx. And it was not a good mythic, so I'm glad they downshifted that to rare. Kudos. I'm, I don't know how I feel about you reprinting it, but that's fine. Waka balaka. Put out an entire article about why Worm was unshifted. It seems to make sense. Or you're gullible. Um, no, I think I think Palak Worm being upshifted to rare makes a ton of sense. Uh, the card is absurd, like... And and when it was when it was actually in like a playable card, people just loved playing with it. It was an excellent sideboard choice. Some people spit flame and a foil and enigma. Ooh, that's pretty. Look at how pretty that is. Um, when when people when you play a block of worm, it's it's good. It's got it's got tons of text on it. It draws you a card. It gains you life, um, and it has trample. And it is a seven seven for seven. So I, I, I'm. I'm, I understand why they upshifted it. I'm just mad because, like, you know, we had it uncommon, and now we have to pay more for it. You know, that kind of thing. Ooh, wow. Foil Elvish Clan Collar. I'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. Look at that. Huh? Gorgeous. Gorgeous. I, mm, not as good as Alpine Moon, but still really pretty. And this card's going to be great in modern. Play it. Uh, moving right along. Moving on up. Conspiracy 1 was a really good draft format. I hope they do another Conspiracy soon. Multiplayer draft pots are fun. I like the uh, creative drafting sets that they've done, like Battle Bond and Conspiracy and stuff. Gen of Wishes. Do not like. Dislike. Supreme Dislike. Do not want. It is a reprint. It is a good commander card and a good draft card, and it's not good for uh, competitive constructed formats, which is fine. There's multiple ways to play Magic, which is because it kind of has to appeal to everybody. Or make no one happy. I mean, that's another option for them. Uh, Dismissive Pyromancer. I hate this card. This card's dumb. This card is dumb. Look at it. You see it? You see this card? This card's dumb. This card's bad. It should not be a rare. Uh, I don't know why they made it. It doesn't feel good in draft. It doesn't feel like it has a good home in standard. Um, I don't know why they made it. So, if you know why they made Dismissive Pyromancer and why I should not just dismiss it, pun intended, let me know. This card seems to be popping up a lot too, guys. Remorseful Cleric. Uh, so, keep that in mind too. So, uh, oh, an another thing I'll say about booster boxes. It's an okay looter. I think you're right. I mean, it is, it's an okay looter. But, like, and this is this is back to Palaka Worm, right? So, we, we have cards that loot if you just tap them. So why do, why do I have to pay mana to loot? But I guess I guess because it's a looter with multiple abilities. There he is again, Palakworm. We were just talking about this guy. Um, I guess I guess because he has multiple abilities, you've got to be able to pay for the loot. Otherwise, he's too good. I, it makes sense, but I like to complain. <laughs> let me let me hate things. Uh, here's some uncommons and commons and things like that. I do like Skyrider Patrol. A lot of people have been talking about this card, uh, running it as kind of like maybe a one or two of a main board against certain kind of strats. Uh, making things lose hexproof is pretty good. I'm glad they put that in the format. Yes, and they, I agree with you. They've got to have bad rares to make the good rares look good. There's you've got a you've got to feel like you know you've got a shoddy great sword or whatever and then you pick up a shinier great sword and it's an upgrade. You got to feel like at some point you you've upgraded you've progressed. Otherwise it's not fun. Open the graves and another foil feathered creeper or field creeper not feathered creeper. Uh, this is another card that I don't super duper like, uh, but it's probably amazing and limited because it turns all of your creatures into death rattle. Make a two two Hearthstone. Card. 
Uh, there's that cool beast token that I like. I like this beast token. Moving right along. <laughs> Magic cards are good. There's a shock reprint. Give us lightning bolt. <laughs> uh, I really like this card, Johnny's Pride Mate, uh, and they've made like a life gain strat, possibly relevant in something maybe other than limited. We'll see. Uh, Central Sword. This card is actually good. I just, it's just the art is not my favorite. Um, but for six mana, you can equip a creature, make it have vigilance, and make knights when it attacks. So, like, hey, you got that going for you, which is nice, right? Oh, man. I'm going to run out of space to stack all these commons. That's going to feel bad. There is one other Onake Ogre, but it is an Ogre Spirit. He's legendary out of a core set. So, I don't... Where are the where are the Onake from? Is that... Is that, uh, is that Kamigawa block? Yeah, Liliana's Mastery was way better than that card. I also, I agree with that very much. Hey, two, two mares. Um, yeah, Liliana's, Liliana's Mastery was actually playable. <laughs> um, that card, that card will be, you can play it in limited, and it'll be good for you sometimes, and then sometimes it'll be useless. It'll be awful. Magic cards, magic cards. Another Diamond Mare. Looking fabulous. Look how fabulous she is. Dragon's Horde. Uh, I do like this card just because it's very flavorful. This is like a super, this is like one of the most flavor win cards they printed in the sets. The Dragon's Horde. So, I like that a lot. Also, um, as our store is getting more and more into uh, Dungeons and Dragons, I look at these art elements and think, oh, that'd be a, that'd be a cool handout. That'd be a cool handout in a D&D &D game. Help help illustrate the world with these fine Magic the Gathering artists. Thud, skilled animator, and there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Tezzeret, Artifice Master. Do you guys think this card's going to see any play? Making a Thopter creature token is pretty good. Um, and then when you have Metalcraft, you get to draw, like, you get to, you get to draw a card. Uh, and then maybe get to draw two cards. I don't know. I don't know if that card's going to see any play. I like him. Oh, the zombie card is going to be good in Aristocrat uh, EDH? Yeah, that makes sense. That's true. That's true. Because if you're sacking lots of things, um, it's, going to be, it's going to be really good. I was, uh, I was helping a player build a goofy, janky modern deck the other day. And it was basically an Aristocrat so uh, style modern deck with um, Anafenza. Um, uh, what's the vampire that sacks something? Viscera Seer and a uh, Persist Creature. And you basically had infinite sacks that way. There he is again! Colossal Dreadmaw! Keep an eye out, guys, for Colossal Dreadmaw Masters, where they print every version of Colossal Dreadmaw with the same art, but foil with a mythic symbol. Um, yep, you heard it here first, folks. That's gonna happen. Uh, if it doesn't happen, I won't do anything, because I myself don't believe that it'll happen. A Tezzeret Antiquities deck work. I want Antiquities War to work as well. Um, and also, keep in mind that Tezzeret comes down on turn 5. So after you play Antiquities War, you can play Tezzeret and generate that Thopter token, which will kind of get it there in time to, to get the buff. And then it's a 5-5 five, five flying creature, which is pretty good. There's some bad uncommons. Steven the Catastrophes, he's pretty great. But yeah, I want to I wanna see somebody make an Antiquities deck war, uh, uh, war deck work as well. But I think the high time to play that is going to be now, uh, before Kaladesh rotates. And so the, the benefit to building an efficient Antiquities War deck has kind of a short timer on it right now. Unless we get more artifacts in the next set. There's another Johnny's Last Stand. I don't know what to think about that card. I don't think I like it. I don't think it's going to see play. Um, but who knows? If somebody plays a Nicol Bolas the Ravager and I discard it, it's going to feel pretty good. Oh, maybe that's why they did it. Look at that. Hey, guys, this makes this super makes sense now. You make a 4-4. This guy makes you discard a card. You make a 4-4, and then they fight, and they're the same. <gasps> ah, flavor win. All right, I get it. I get it now. Okay. Well played, Wizards of the Coast. 
You're one step ahead of me, as per usual. Sun Cleanser. Karn and Tez is an OP setup. Absolutely. Holy cow. Man, Karn is just going to be good forever, isn't he, guys? <laughs> Karn is going to be good forever. You heard it here first, folks. Karn is good forever. Pick him up while you can. His name is Karn. Uh, I don't have anything that rhymes with that other than Scalding Tarn, but that doesn't really make any sense. So let's just leave that alone. Master Thopterist. Some more Thopter themed stuff going on here. Uh, wow, actually. Um, whenever you cast an artifact spell, create a Thopter token. You know, that's like. Um, uh, what is that? Assembly card from uh, Thopter Assembly? Is that what it's called? Whenever you cast an artifact card, you you make a make a thopter, but that card costs one less. So and it's a creature. What do you know? Apex of power. I want somebody to break this card. Exile the top seven cards of your library until end of turn. You may cast non-land cards. Exile this way. Uh, if the spell is cast from your hand, you add ten mana of any color. Uh, if you play this, if you play this into an omniscience. That's going to feel pretty good. Maybe somebody will build a deck around that. Karn will be $70 at least after rotation. Something, something, Dan. <laughs> oh, something, something, Barn, yeah. No, I agree. I think I think Karn will probably be around $70 after rotation. The only way Wizards of the Coast is going to get around that, you know, if you view that as a problem, that problem is if they immediately reprint him in some sort of master set or some kind of some kind of supplementary set or dual deck or something. Because um, otherwise, uh, as you say, he's going to be very expensive. And uh, I don't think people are going to like that. I don't think people... How much is he now? Uh, Karn, I think he's hovering around like $38 on TCG the last time I checked. But uh, he could have gone down a bit just in anticipation of this new set coming out. People buying fewer Karns and more Sarkans on ceilings. That's not going to happen. Let's not talk about that card. Uh, card's good for commander. Card's really good in seals or limited. Or not, I don't know what to think. And then my night bot is reminding me to remind you guys, uh, if you follow our channel, we do open boxes and product quite frequently, or we're gonna try to. Uh, and we also talk about kind of like the day-to-day -day of a, a game shop and running a card store and things like that. I don't like this card. I'm not even gonna read it. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, blue card with uh, lots of. Oh, actually, no, wait, wait. Uh, it's just draw cards with the um, highest converted mana cost among artifacts you control. That could be good. That'd be good. Four mana is a lot to pay for something that doesn't stay on the board. Four mana is a lot to pay, guys. You heard it here first. Psychic corrosion. That's not a rare. Graveyard marshal. He makes zombies. He's he's a. 3-2? Oh, he's a 3-2. Look at that aggressive cost. 3-2 for 2. Yeah, okay. Sure. Oh, that's a zombie. That's a that's a zombie. Oh, is, is he $50 right now? Um, Clan Neltop, there is not going to be a midnight draft. Um, and we, we stopped doing our midnight events because Wizards of the Coast let us sell booster boxes a week early. So there's no more reason to like hype up, like get your booster boxes as soon as you can, because we already gave them away at midnight a week early, you know. <coughs> and then we're doing the draft weekend stuff. Saturday at 2 and Sunday at 2, we're doing our draft weekend. Uh, please come join us. It is a $10 entry fee, which is super cheap. And uh, you get a sweet promo. You get a sick promo. My commons are going to fall over into like everything else, and it's going to be... Uh, disorganized. Hey, remember how we were talking about how disappointing it is to open a foil phylactery lich? Look at that. Hashtag disappointment. Hashtag bad beats. Hashtag host town. This guy's cool though. Like he's legendary. And he's a bear. This guy named Freddy who likes bears. Uh, so this card is for Freddy. They made that card specifically for him. Oh, is he 34? Okay, that's what I thought. I thought he was around like 35 or 38 or whatever. Well, now's a, now's a good time to pick them up, guys. How do you, how do I make money with ten dollar drafts? Uh, Black Magic. Um, I do not make money with ten dollar drafts. Uh, the store the store does not make money with ten dollar drafts. So um, what we do is we kind of re, re, we reduce. Ooh, Crucible of Worlds! Yay! We reduce the prize support. 
for a ten dollar draft, um, and then in lieu of prize support, you kind of you get that cool promo from Wizards of the Coast. And uh, mostly what it is, is it's a kind of like a celebration of the new set releasing. We want you to come to the store and open product and hopefully trade it into us and that sort of thing. But yeah, we don't make money doing that. It's, it's, yeah, we, we write it off as advertising <laughs> um, is what it is. It's for the players, man. But yeah, I'm, don't remind me. Don't remind me, Matt Black Magic. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Crucible. This is the first Crucible World we got pulled. Uh, so, yeah, I'm excited about that. Uh, people really want this card, and they especially want it right now because it's cheap. You want a, a patient a patient rebuilding play mat. Yeah, that, that's actually, that'd be, a, that'd be a sick art. Yeah, no worries, Black Magic. I, the, the re, I think the reason why I responded to that is because there's a lot of, um, you know, f uh, game store owners on forums and stuff like that. And so everybody will kind of get together and, and lament about how sometimes um, stores will run events where they don't make any money and it doesn't make a lot of financial se uh, sense. And sometimes it can be harmful to the game store community to run cheap events like that because it hurts all the stores in your area. Um, but fortunately for me, most of the stores here in Knoxville also kind of like play by the $10 draft rule. Um, but they and they only do it on special occasions, so it works out. Nobody nobody gets hurt, no harm done, that sort of thing. Any other safekeeping? This card houses tokens, so if you play tokens, screw you, screw you. <laughs> cough, cough, level up. Yeah, yeah. What are you talking about, Claire Melda? Uh. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, Lightning Mare, Foul Spectre, Departed Deckhand. That used to be my street name back in the day. Uh, Prodigious Growth. This card is good in draft. Uh, this card is good in draft, guys. Let me reiterate that this card is good in draft. And probably nowhere else. Uh, there you go. There's Nickel Bolas token. I like him. Nickel Bolas and I used to be friends. Oh yeah, we're not worried about that. It's uh, that's an, that's another thing that uh, kind of like most game stores try to avoid doing is racing to the bottom. Uh, nobody really wins on a race to the bottom, and uh, it just it just makes it just makes it bad for everyone. It's bad for the players too, really. Well, Liliana's contract. Uh, if you are just turning tuning in and you play Magic the Gathering in Knoxville, we are doing a Liliana's contract challenge. If you're the first player to go uh, four and zero at an F and M with a Liliana's contract deck, you will get a free bundle. That's ten booster packs. Uh, oh, they're done printing current. Yeah, yeah. So, so they are. They they did it. They did actually an extra. They did like an emergency reprint of Dominaria or something like that because stores ran out like a lot faster. Than, ooh, Arcadia Strategist. Ah, yeah, I like this card. Everybody likes this card. Now we have one. All right. Butt fight. Or, mm, uh, everybody... Uh, no, it's not butt fight. It's just walls can fight. But yeah, uh, you are, you're correct, um, uh, Jedro. The, the Dominaria, the Dominaria stock will soon be drying up. Um, and when that, when that does happen, Karns will, will begin to slowly climb in price because Karn is one of the best cards out of that format or out of that set. Also, a, an interesting thing happens because there's like a great equalizer effect. As Karn goes up in price, you will notice that other cards go down in price uh, because people are cracking boxes to get Karns. And so they, and they gotta sell all the other crap. There's another Elvish uh, clan caller. And I'm going to start using the booster boxes to put the cards in. We've got 1,000 count boxes next door, but I just forgot to take them over here. What is it? Well, it's 11.17. I think we're probably going to get through about half this case here. And then I'll do the, the rest of the case a little bit later today. And then tune in uh, tomorrow morning, Friday, where I'm going to have Bobby here with me. And we're going to open it up much, much faster. Demanding Dragon. He's got bad haste. That's all I can say about the cards is he's got bad haste. All right, so I'm gonna take some of these. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the the commons in the boozer box. Hold on, 
I'm going to go and we're going to get into our next box. Uh, I was pretty pleased with this box as well. Uh, Crucible Worlds is never a sad card to open. I'm never upset if I open a Crucible World, so you can quote me on that. Um, and maybe it'll come back to bite me later. Uh, but I gotta say, Crucible Worlds is a fun card. It's a fun card to play with. And I like it. And it likes you, chat. And if you like Crucible Worlds, you should follow our channel. Because we also like, we have something in common. We both like Crucible Worlds. So here's box number three, guys. Um, so far, our poll's been pretty decent. This box, I think, was a little bit less impressive than the other box. The other box, we opened three Planeswalkers. Uh, this box, we opened fewer Mythics, I think. We opened an Arcadia Sabbath. We opened a Crucible, which is really great. Uh, we opened an Apex of Power, which is kind of meh. But okay, we opened a Tezzeret. Yeah, so those were our Mythics. So we got fewer mythics out of this box. The Crucible is great. Um, Arcadia Sabbath is great. Tezzer is great. They're all good mythics, except for I think Apex of Power is is uh, less exciting. And now we're gonna enter the danger zone with our next box. Danger zone. Recenter that here. So normally when we open a box, we have this this card sorter over here. See that? And we kind of like sort everything out. That's a whole thing. Today I'm trying to open them uh, quickly, so I'm not doing that, and for that I apologize. I'm deeply sorry. Um, but we will be organizing them, I'll be organizing them today, and it'll be fun. That's great tune, guys. Alternate art foil of this cool card. If you come to Draft Weekend, check your local game store, or just come here if, you're, if you live in Tennessee. Come play Draft Weekend with us, get a cool promo. Open Magic the Gathering booster packs. Have fun with people you know and don't know. Oh, that's the wrong stack. Oh, uh, Declare Dominance on a death, death Touch creature in Limited. It's really good. Anyway. Uh, Mentor of the Meek. We already talked about that card. Ooh, ah, mm. All right. Foil totally lost. I'm going to hide it somewhere in the store. If you find it, you get a cookie. For the Liliana contract challenge, do I have to play a four of? Yes, you must play a four of of the Liliana's contract. Well, hmm. you don't have to play a four of the Liliana's contract, but you must win some of your games with Liliana's contract. You can't just put one Liliana's contract in your deck. I'll say, I'll say a minimum of three Liliana's contracts, so you can play three or four. Um, and and it it must be your main win condition. So I don't I don't want people to be like throw one Liliana's contract into a mono black deck and be like look I, I won with the Liliana's contract deck because that's what you're gonna sound like. Steven, give me my free give me my free bundle. I, I I followed your rules technically. So one thing here's here's some insight, guys. One thing when you run a card store, what you find is that most Magic players are lawyers. And being technically correct is very important. And that's okay. I love my Magic the Gathering community, but that is that is very much kind of like a thing that, that they do. Uh, Cleansing Nova, the best board wipe we have in standard right now. Yay! Revitalize. Also, guys, in draft, you can get dual lands in the last place of Landslide. It's amazing. It is the best kind of crack. Yeah, being technically correct is the best kind of crack. You're right, Snapro. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's yeah, being technically correct. It's, it's yeah, it's a thing. Dragon Egg, cool. I really like Meteor Golem. I think this card is going to be played in Commander. It's really fun. And Dragonosaurus. Ooh, and a foil Herald Faith. Harold of Faith's uh, little-known brother, Gerald of Little Faith, does not gain you as much life. That's your joke for the day, guys. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, magic cards. Those are cool. Gosh, I'm putting things in the wrong stack now. Ah. All right, there we go. Palaka Worm. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to go and pull all the Palaka Worms uh, from from bulk because people will want them. 
gaining seven life, and when it dies, drawing a card and having a seven seven trample. Those are all good things. Remember, I talked about reanimator being a strat. Well, uh, yeah, reanimating a block worm, a plus choice. Wind Reader Sphinx downshifted. So we, we, I think, I think this is a good rule. Wizards of the Coast. I, if you're watching, and I know you are, every time you upshift a card, downshift a card as well. And that way, like harmony and balance among the four elements will be will be like secure, and we won't have like a problem where the Fire Nation takes over multiple other nations and like destroys the entire Water Tribe or whatever. You know, I'm just I'm not saying that that's happened before. I'm just saying like that's what you should do. Chaos Wand. Uh, I think this would be this would be a good card. To board in against somebody who's playing Apex of Power. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. <laughs> all right. Ah! I knocked it over. Apologies. Sorry if anybody experienced some uh, vertigo or motion sickness there. Uh, I have a low. I have low dexterity, so I fail most of my dexterity checks. Uh, just gonna put that out there. Volcanic Dragon. Some of my favorite art in the game of Magic is on Volcanic Dragon. I think that is a sick dragon. Um, and I think that if anybody builds that, you know, we were talking about earlier, the um, the Antiquities War deck. I think this guy goes in that deck. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. Opening booster packs. <laughs> Commons, uncommons, Banefire. All right. Let's talk about Banefire just for a second here. If you play Bobby in Magic the Gathering and Banefire is in any kind of like format, he's playing it. Also, look at that art. That art's great. The artist here, Raymond Swanland, he draws like that a lot, and I love it. I absolutely love it. Super good. And that is Sarkin, by the way, shooting out some Banefire. So kudos to Sarkin. Way to go, buddy. Do 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 do. Boop. Blanchard Armor, Lightning Mirror, Grave Digger, and ooh, Bad Mythic. All right, guys, here's our here's our first really bad mythic. This card is just bad. There's there's nothing there's nothing good about this card. It's just bad. It's a five four flyer for five. Get dunked. Welcome to Hose Town, Population Me. Bam. Meep, meep, meep. By the way, guys, don't forget to... Uh, I'm, I'm probably just going to say this a lot because I'm practicing. Don't forget to follow the page because we open lots of stuff on stream. Ooh, Nicobolus! Nicobolus! Like, he flips into this guy. is so good. It only costs eight mana. Yeah. That was the best card in your pre-release deck. I'm sorry, Severo. He's great. Okay, Severo, he's great and limited. He's super good. He's super good and limited. Um, he's just bad for literally everything else. <laughs> he's super good and limited, though. He said, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult you, Bone Dragon. And if he fights Nicobolus, they, they tie. They, they, they kill each other in a fight. That happens. I'll tell you one time. One time I was like, uh, this was when this was when like vape pens just came out, and there was a lot of hate for vape pens. Which honestly, I don't really mind uh, vaping all that much. But I was taken in by by the sweep of memes insulting them, and I I like publicly declared like I made some kind of joke about it, and the guy sitting next to me was like, actually, you know, like I quit smoking and, and picked up vaping, and it really helped me out. And then I just felt like a like a uh, a wang rod. <laughs> for the rest of the evening. So, lesson lesson obviously not learned because I still insult things that people like, but there you go. You know that about me that. That's a thing you know. Another foil cleansing nova. Look at how gorgeous it is. I've heard this card is good too. And it's a dinosaur. So, kudos to Wizards for printing more dino support. Hopefully, uh, we'll see some dino decks in either tier 2 decks or maybe even a tier 1 deck. I'd love to see a tier 1 dinosaur deck. That'd be cool. Not an insult. More, more comment about the quality of your deck. Oh, okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Sometimes the the fun, both the fun and unfun of pre-releases. Sometimes you get a really good limited pool, but and sometimes you get a bad limited pool. The demanding dragon, not so great. 
Um, he demands your deck, your cards be better. He's good and limited, though. I mean, this card is fantastic and limited. 5-5 five, five, flyer for 5? Absolutely. Andy kind of does something when he comes to play? Sure. Sign me up. Still have fun? That's good. That's good. I love pre-release. Pre-release uh, pre is like some of my favorite ways to play Magic. I have a lot of good memories about pre-release. Um, playing and you just get to experience the set for the first time. It's really fun. Sun Cleanser. Uh, people are trying to abuse that card with some Phyrexian Snow Juggernaut or something like that. It's like an 8-8 eight, eight for 3 with a cumulative snow counter upkeep, but Sun Cleanser stops that. Um, the more you know. Doo, doo, doo. Make a stand. Lightning Strike Switcheroo. And I love this card. This cool legendary. Uh, Dragon Queen. She's Queen of Dragons. 6-6 six, six for 6. Fly it. Makes dragons. Pumps dragons. Absolutely. I will take it. I've got quite the pile of packs up here, guys. Quite the quite the pile. Woo! Cruising right along. Omniscience! This is one of my favorite cards. When this card first came out, I think it was like 10 bucks. And it's just kind of gone up from there. Also, you'll notice on the art, do you see what Jace is walking on here? That's the Planeswalker system symbol. Whoa! Crazy! What does it mean? He's walking into the blind eternities! Oh my gosh! I think magic lore is cool. <laughs> I heard some uh, some people were like making fun of it on Reddit. And I was like, no, it's not like that. It's cool. Uh, Demon of Cat Ass Trophies. Also, no vulgarity on this channel. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, dee, 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 dee. I like Manolith too. Uh, if you're a commander player and you're kind of like building on a budget, put Manolith in like every single one of your decks. It's good. Uh, stupid art! Stupid art! Stupid art! Look at it. Look at how dumb that is. Rah! I blame the art director, not the artist. The artist did a good job on the card. It's well drawn. Um, I just think it's dumb. You could have had like a cool like knight symbol or cool shield symbol or or like literally anything but a dumb bald guy <laughs> literally anything Ooh, escape shift all right yeah sign me up um wow we got a nickel balls and escape shift out of this box absolutely there he is uh also love the art on the escape shift more than uh the other escape shift art and a four of planes sure so, that card's good. What do you use for card prices for your shop? Uh, black, uh, black, black, uh, black Tea Magic. We use TCG Player Mid. Um, so, that's kind of like what we roughly base it off. But a lot of times, TCG Player Mid can be uh, inaccurate. So, we kind of, we use a variety of metrics. So, we'll, we'll kind of like generally go off TCG Player Mid. Unless there's a ton of cards listed at a lower or higher price. So let's say um, Dismissive Pyromancer was TCG Mid, TCG Mid $5, but the first page of listings were near mint 99 cents. Well, in reality, people are selling the card for a dollar, so we're gonna sell the card for a dollar, we're not gonna try to sell it for five. Um, and that's that's kind of how we base our cards out, like, because a lot of times uh, TCG mid can be inaccurate, but we basically the answer is we roughly go off a of TCG player. TCG player is kind of like the most competitive Magic market, and so we feel like if players are going to be playing in our store and uh, buying cards from us, we should try to give them the best price. So we use TCG mid. Goblin Trash Master. That's what they used to call me in high school. I looked like that too. Got some surgery. Look a little bit better now. Uh, Uncomfortable chill. That's what happens when I turn the AC down too low. Only cost me three mana. You would not believe what the AC bill, uh, bill is to cool this place down. I'm pretty sure KUB is going to like fire me from the grid because I draw so much power. Quit giving me remorseful clerics, wizards! I don't, ah! <laughs> I don't want that card! <laughs> Nobody wants it. It's a two one. Exile all cards from target player's graveyard. Really? Really? That's what you're going to do me like that? 
You are gonna do me like that. Okay, Wizards of the Coast. I'll play your game. Literally. Dark Dweller Oracle. Oh, this is a Goblin Dark Dwellers. We have more Dark Dwellers. Sacrifice a creature, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Oh, that's cool. It's kind of like a little draw engine. That's neat. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. And that's a very... They've recently, in recent years, they've got the um, the exile the top card of your library. You may play it as the red draw ability. They've got the draw discard kind of ability. And then the, the exile flavor as well. Oh, yeah, and the Nightbot's reminding me. You guys can also follow us on Twitter. Sometimes we uh, live stream off of Twitter as well. Like if I'm opening the shop or, or Bobby and I are, are doing something or I'm, I'm doing something goofy with Josiah or something, I will live stream it. And uh, we put that up there. So be sure to follow us on Twitter as well. We also announce whenever we upload a, uh, a, a video to YouTube or when we're streaming on Twitch. So follow us on Twitter. I'm trying to get better about using Twitter. I'm not very good at it now. So you following me will make me better. Make me better, guys. Hashtag make card shop talk great. Reliquary Tower. Love that card. Um... Aether Shield Artificer. I like the art on this card. That's a cool card. And then another Detection Tower. Sure, we'll take it. I like I like pulling cards that either players want, as in cards that they can use, or expensive cards because I'm a money grubbing game store owner, apparently. Thorn Lieutenant, <laughs> don't touch me. <laughs> That's what this card says. This card says, don't, don't, do not touch. You can look, but you can't touch. Don't touch me. I don't know if you feel like. Uh, that card's weird. But man, paying six to give it plus four, plus four. That seems okay. I know. Cards like this, people tend to like poo-poo on. But then when they actually run them in a standard format, they tend to be good. Uh, what was that card? That was the card that gave... It got plus two, plus two. And it gave lands you control plus two, plus two in Vigilance. After you had like a, a certain threshold of them. That card was like deceptively good. Ooh! Palladia Moors, the Ruiner. Uh, this is the sister of Nicol Bolas, if I remember from lore correctly. And she's Naya Colors. Check that out. Nice. 6-6 six, six for 6. I'll take it. Flying, Vigilance, Trample, Hexproof if it hasn't dealt damage. Don't touch me, she says. That card's really good. I agree. Wait, wait, wait. Are you talking about Thorn Lieutenant or Palladia Moors? I think Thorn Lieutenant is good. I think people are not giving it enough credit. There's a reason why that's a 2-3 rare and not an uncommon. Um, choo -choo -choo, novice Knight. No thank you. Miss Collar. Sideboard. Modern Merfolk card, I, I guess. Give me, give me more Merfolk Wizards. Like, more good ones. Dragon. Oh, the Elf. Yeah, the Dragon is also really good. Yep. Ooh, Walking Ballista does work with it. Shoot, you're right. Um, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a zero cost, there's a, there's a, like, there's another card that infinite combos with it now that I think about it. It's like a, it's like a vintage card, but a giant's left stand. We already talked about that card. I think, I also feel like you can, when, when we're opening these, we can kind of gain some speed just because if I've already talked about a card, I don't have to talk about it again. So there's that. Vivian's Invocation. That's the first one of these that we pulled. And it costs seven. And it's not a good card. Look at the top seven cards of your library. You may put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest... Oh, wait! Never mind. Never mind, guys. This card's great. You guys remember Summoning Trap? Summoning Trap used to be really good. You can play this game where you ramp to seven mana and you get a free creature. Woo! Alright. I like the art on this card. That's all I have to say about that. Aegis of the Heavens... Sorry, guys. I'm trying to work with the camera here. Screw you, tokens. That's what this card says. We already talked about that. Mm -hmm. All right. Last three packs here. What have we got? We got 1137. 1137. Magic, magic, magic. Oh, that's not common. Because the heavens. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, hold on a second. Praying omnipotence, by the way. This is the second foil alpine moon. Wizards of the Coast. You gave me a foil cleansing nova and a foil alpine moon twice. Uh, one case. Let's talk. I want different. 
I also got a foil fly through your ledge. I don't like that. But this is cool. I like this. This card's pretty. All right. Neat. Last two packs here. This is pack number 35. Sift and Clan Collar. I'll take a Clan Collar. I like Elvish Clan Collar. I think that card's good. Um, and then as uh, Black Team Magic said, that card is really good versus Grape Shot. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The art looks sweet. Would be sweet as a full art. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, man. Yeah, if somebody could, like, full art the foil, that would look sick. I would I would buy that card. We don't get very many altars traded in to the store, but I would buy it. Take vengeance! Destroy target type, type creature for... This is a assassinate that's better in a different color. And a bleh. Flack Uh That's That's that box, guys. I'm gonna move my commons over here because my common stack it grows in power. Uh, this box I don't know how to be, I don't, did we get a planeswalker out of this box? But I think we got a nickel bullets. So our first box we got three planeswalkers, which I say is good. Uh, most valuable card foil totally lost. But uh, uh, um, the first box that we we opened we got a full or we got three planeswalkers, which I was really pleased with. That's a good card. What, where, where are our mythics here? What, uh, we got a uh, plenty of Moors. Okay, that's cool. So what I've been finding is these Elder Dragons are pretty rare. The mythics, uh, all the mythics feel. Oh, we got a scape shift out of this one though, and an omniscience. Okay, never mind. I feel good about this box. Feel good. We got a scape shift and omniscience. The Bone Dragon feels bad. The Nicobolus feels good. Um, and yeah, so again, uh, out of this box, we got we got five we got five uh, mythics out of this box. Which is good, because Bone Dragon, in my opinion, does not count as a mythic. So, maybe maybe there's a method to Wizards of the Coast Madness. One, two, three, four, five. This this box was bonkers, though. The, our first box, that box was really good. We've got three Planeswalkers. Life is good. Um, so with that, we're going to put this box away. And then, what is it, 11.39? Alright, guys, we're going to go into turbo mode. And we're going to try to open one more box. Uh, don't forget, you can follow our channel. I will keep the rest of the, the other two boxes here that are in our case um, just in the streaming room. And then uh, later in the day, when I get a chance, I will come back to this room, resume this stream, and open the other two boxes. Uh, we're going to get through this one uh, as soon as we can. And then also, uh, Nightbot just mentioned that we are doing a D and D. Uh, August, mark your calendars for August fourth and fifth. We are uh, teaming up with Extra Life in our local children's hospital, and we are going to be streaming D and D out of the store and hosting a uh, an event called Adventures for Adventure for Extra Life um, that will benefit our local children's hospital. And you get to play D and D, and you get to play in an epic, which should be pretty fun. You get cool loot for that. Gigantosaurus. I like this card. Flavor text on this card is fire. Boo! 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 Ugh. Okay. I don't like that card. Although you guys did make a good case for it. Um, you did make a good case for it. Card is really good against Grape Shot. Oh, you're talking about the anti-token card. Yeah, that card is really good against Grape Shot. You're correct. Oh, Cleansing Nova. I like Cleansing Nova! I feel like this card's gonna be like a dollar forever. Um, destroy all artifacts and enchantments, great. Destroy all creatures, great. Like having having the options is is pretty solid. I feel like this is gonna be a very played card. I think we're gonna get a lot of um, Esper style control decks, depending on how good our fixing is in the format and stuff like that. So hopefully standard is gonna be a fun and diverse format and not just a bunch of mono red decks. Although, don't get me wrong, I do love mono red. So what I'll be doing, guys, is I'll be taking the rares over with me to the main store. You cannot buy them yet. You can't buy them until Friday. That's the rule. And then I will leave the rest of the stuff over here and organize it and open the rest of the boxes after I open the shop. And one of my employees comes in and relieves me for the rest of the shift. I haven't seen this guy yet. Lena, selfless champion. 
Uh, when enters the battlefield, make a white soldier token for each non-token creature you control. Wow! Sacrifice your creatures with power less gain and indestructible. Wow! Oh, but it costs six mana. Boo. Boo. Guys, there's literally... There's literally a pile. <laughs> uh... If you ask my employees if I'm messy, and they say yes, they're lying to you. All right? They're lying to you. Supreme Phantom! Ooh, spoopy. Because we need a spirit lord in the set that doesn't have very many spirits. Everything happens. Oh, there he is! Colossal Dreadma. Colossal Dreadma Masters. Double cast. Double cast. Hungering Hydra, absolutely, okay. I like Hungering Hydra. I like Hydras in general. I think they're cool. I think uh, Wizards of the Coast has done a really good job of kind of like making the flavor for a Hungering Hydra. Lena goes straight into your Ariel. Pro oh, yeah, she does, doesn't she? Wait, does she make Night Tokens? Does she make 1-1 one, one Night Tokens? Hold on. White Soldier Tokens. Still, though, yeah, no, she definitely goes into Ariel. Absolutely. We you know, um, several. We tried to get Brawl started on Wednesdays. I think Brawl is a really good format. It's just hard. We we, we haven't had very much success like running organized Brawl play. But uh, if you're watching this channel and you play in Knoxville, please build a Brawl deck and just get that format going. I feel like that format is budget friendly to new players, and um, and helps get people into the game. It is a more casual way to play standard and a Multiplayer format, so play Brawl. Wizards of the Coast likes it, you should like it too. Hashtag, you can't tell me what to do, you're not my real dad. Switcheroo, lady with the vulture hat. <laughs> uh, Asara the Awakener. Oh, are they? If they, Man, if Wizards of the Coast does store support, support for Brawl, that'll be the tipping point, right? Because, like, I can't... So Friday, we can get people to come out and play standard. Easy peasy, right? Because Friday, everybody knows. We're going to come out and play... The, we're going to play standard on Friday. That's the thing. But there's no day or reward for playing Brawl. So if you enjoy going down to your local card store, there's no reason for you to play it. We already talked about that card. Foil Druid Horns, Enchantments, and Limited as a thing. That's pretty. I like that. I like that foil. Tez Emblem. I think Tezzeret looks dumb, by the way. What do you guys think? I think he's just progressively started looking dumber. And and there's nothing about him that I think is dumb except for his stupid eyebrows. Look at these stupid, look at these stupid eyebrows. Look at that. Look, do you see his stupid eyebrows? The little nickel bolas tattoos on his face. They were vague and non-committal, but they mentioned it. Yeah, um, now that, now that you mentioned that, Severo, I think I will go. Wizards of the Coast has a, like, a Facebook page for 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 uh, Wizards Play Network stores to kind of like give them feedback. I think I'll mention that we would really like some some brawl support, uh, and put one vote in the favor in their favor. Infernal Reckoning. Um, also, uh, as <laughs> he looks like he picked up an unhealthy CrossFit habit. <laughs> Yeah, please, dude. If Tezzeret was going to the CrossFit, I would be like next to next to our store. I would be upset. I would be my Jimmys would be very rustled. The Gen of Wishes is a bad card. Let's feel bad about that together, shall we? Um, but here's some here's some pro advice, guys. If you're thinking about getting a tattoo, that is fine. That's fine. Where you know it's 2018. If you want a tattoo, get a tattoo. Do not get nickel bolus horn tattoos that cross over your eyebrows and go into your forehead. Or I will call you a dum-dum. <laughs> All right? Look, he's a blue planeswalker. He's supposed to be smart. That was a bad life choice. Maybe it's because Nickel Bowls mind control them. Who knows? I love Rise from the Grave, by the way. It's a great card. I'm glad it's not rare. There's another uh, Vivian's Invocation. I like this card, too. I think that card's good. Uh, what do we got? We got I got 13 minutes before the store opens. It was in the rule changes article. Oh, the brawl stuff was in the rule changes article. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did. I read that. I think I just skimmed over that part though. 
I have selective vision. Hey, that's our first of Johnny. Alright, a Johnny. What do you do, a Johnny? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. There we go. Put a 1 1 counter on up to two darker creatures. Return to a creature. Convert may cost two or less in the battlefield. He only costs four mana. <gasps> Ooh. You get an emblem at the beginning of uh, your up end step. Create three cat tokens with life. Like, wow. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll take it. That card's cool. Thanks. Thanks, wizards. Thank. Uh, we have opened out of three boxes every Planeswalker except for Sarkin now, I believe. <laughs> so keep an eye out for Sarkin, ladies and gentlemen. He is, he's the uh, the missing piece. He's the fifth element at the moment. <gasps> he is the fifth element, though. Oh, I made a good joke. And then I ruined it by recognizing that I made a good joke. Uh, what do you guys think about this card? Isolate. Oh my gosh. Focus camera. Focus. Isolate. Exile target permanent with converted mana cost of one. You guys think that's going to see any play in any formats? I don't know. Isolate. I, people were really excited about it when it first got printed, but I just don't know how applicable. Like, there's better one drop choices, right? That deal with a wider variety of things. Lightning Mare. It's a cool card. Exclusion Mage. This is the first Mystic uh, Archaeologist. I, this is in the same vein as Dismissive Pyromancer. Um, I do not like this card. I don't like that it's rare. Uh, I feel like this should have been an uncommon. This feels like a very uncommon effect. Um, I have nothing good to say about this card. People will play it. It will see play. It may even see standard play, but it should not be a rare. Wizard prints a white spell clearly targeted at Deathrite Shaman. Also, Wizard bans Deathrite Shaman before that card is released. <laughs> Deathrite Shaman was an oppressive card, Sephiro. It, it oppressed, it just oppressed people and uh, made them sad, and it wasn't fun to play against, and it was too good. And Wizards of the Coast loves Gutter Snipe, and they don't love Deathrite Shaman. That's the end of that story. Oh, wait, no, these aren't, these are uncommons. Go away. Bring Omnipotence. Great card. Alright. Woo! What time is it? 11.49. My phone's about to die. <laughs> the situation is dire. We might make it out of here alive. We might not. Uh, thud. Diamond Mayor. Miss Collar. Woo! I'm starting to get dizzy. Guys, opening booster packs is hard! Uh, I, yeah. What do you guys think about the Death Rite Shaman ban? You think that was necessary? Uh, a lot of the legacy, a lot of legacy players I've talked to are, are pretty thankful for the ban. But I want to know what you think. Spit Flame! Look at that sweet art! Thanks, Chris Ron, for that awesome Spit Flame art. Look at that guy. The guy's like getting absolutely murked. Whew, four damage does a lot. Ooh, man, say goodbye to your battle axe, buddy. <laughs> Ah. Uh. Yep, 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 yep. Uncommons, commons. Herald of Faith. We talked about that card already. Leonum War Leader. Uh, if you guys remember, there was a card out of, um, what is it called? Mirrored and Besiege. Um, called... Uh, something, Hero of something, Hero Bladehold. This card is very similar to Hero Bladehold. So keep keep uh, keep your eyes on it. Might be good. Could be good. Cats. Cats. The musical. Uh, you've been convinced by Justin Parnell's argument that Death Heart Shaman and Probe wouldn't need to be banned if they would just ban Brainstorm instead. But I don't play that format, so shrug. That card is really good. Yeah, I, I agree. Leon War Leader is very good. And then to to yeah. Um I can I can see that. Banning banning Brainstorm. Maybe they don't ban Brainstorm because it's just such an iconic card. Uh, and like old school people just like playing Brainstorm. That makes sense. Here's another Alpine Moon. I don't know how to feel about Alpine Moon either. We've seen a lot of them as well. If you are a, if you like Core sets are, are an interesting thing, because if you are a casual player, you want to open the big dumb dragons and things like that. But if you're a competitive player, you want cards like Alpine Moon. 
And and so like Wizards of the Coast has to walk this fine line of making both of those types of people happy with Corset. It is a challenge to be sure. Another Palaka Worm! Upshifted to rare. Feels bad. It's basically unbannable. Yeah. It's a very strong card too. It like lets you do a lot of dumb stuff. Uh, they banned Sensei's Demining Top though. Hey guys. Colossal Dread <laughs> Reclamation Sage. Suspicious Bookcase. Fell Spectre. They used to call me Suspicious Bookcase back in high school. They did not. They did not actually. Wind Reader Sphinx. Downshifted to rare because it's bad. And it's not fun. It's a 3 7 for 7. And that's not good enough. It's too much mana. And it's bad. And you should feel bad. And they have to print bad cards in Magic so that you feel good when you open the good cards. And that's just how it works. Chaos Wand! Steal somebody's uh, the, uh, Apex Power. Alright guys, we're almost through this box. Boop, 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 Banefire! Bobby loves that card! Yay! Walking Corpse. A lot of good cards in M19, guys. A lot of good cards. Magic is fun. Magic is fun. Uh, ooh, foil lightning there. Look at that. Ooh, that's pretty. Wow, I like that. I like that a lot. That makes me happy. Demanding dragon. Meh. Five five for five with flying with like bad haste. I call that ability bad haste. If your opponent has like the ability to sacrifice like a sapling token or something bad to it, it's got bad haste. Or they take five damage, and it doesn't really matter. Da -da -da. My hope is M19 is gonna like get some deck builder gears wearing, and we're gonna see some creative stuff on uh, on Friday. We'll see. Towns of Wildwood, by the way, really good in draft. Also, I don't know how I feel about that foil. Like that person is like super dark. Sun Cleanser again, meh. Card is meh. Somebody's gonna try to break it. It's going to be too slow, because anything that places counters is slow. And yeah. It's a 1-3 too, isn't it? Oh, it's a 1-4. Still bad. Still bad. Maybe it was a 3-3. Three, three. Mirror image. You may have an added battlefield as a target creature you control for only 3 mana. <gasps> bad dragon. Get wrecked. Said was the coast as they laugh as I paid money for things that I shouldn't pay money for. Also, guys, I'd like to share with you right now that I've been stacking things on the wrong thing, and uh, that makes me sad. Holy cow, I've been doing it a lot. Oh my gosh, what have I done? <gasps> Wait, <laughs> hold on, hold on, guys. So, here, I'll, I'll show you what's going on here. So, I have two stacks here, right? And one stack is commons, and the other stack is uncommons. Well, I put that foil Talons of Wildwood on the wrong stack, and then I got confused, because I've been taking all the commons and putting them in the booster boxes as I go along, and I didn't do that with the uncommons. Anyway, long story short, I'm an idiot. Uh, and I just, I confused myself. And that's, uh, that's really what it came down to. That's really what it came down to. Uh, ooh, I love okay. Boo! This, this, I don't like this card! I don't like it. It should be an uncommon. You're wrong, Wizards of the Coast. Nobody wanted that card. Nobody asked for that. The draft format didn't even ask for that. Get it out of here. Dragon Egg, Gaspar Trump, Master Thopterist. I like how they printed it. I think they're, they're printing more legendaries now than they ever have. I like that. And I like how they're kind of like doing a good job of printing good commander cards in every set. Because we have a lot of players who exclusively play commander. And that is okay. Because that is how they have fun playing the game. And Wizards of the Coast is trying to make the most people have the most fun. Quit giving me remorseful clerics and dismissive pyromancers. Wizards of the Coast. If you're watching, I know you're watching. Fix my boxes. I'm not really that mad about it. This card's okay. All right. Da -na -na -na. 
opening another pack. Remember, guys, we will have these on sale on Friday. You cannot buy them before then. Ooh, another Nicobolus. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Flippy, flippy bolus. All right. Okay, guys, five packs left, and then I gotta open the score. It's gonna be a little bit late. The mailman's gonna be pissed. Or upset, I mean. <clears throat> mailman will be upset. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Make stand, reassembly scales. Ooh, an omniscience. All right, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that card. Look at how good this card is. This card lets you play everything. You can do anything with omniscience. It's only 10 mana. It's only 10. You can get the 10 mana. I believe in you. They're pushing Brawl. Yeah. But I want them to push Brawl. I want to I want to give it a chance. I think I think we've experienced when the community tries to make a format, it's not always successful. A la Frontier and Teeny Leaders. Um, so I'm okay with Wizards of the Coast trying to push one and putting their support behind it because if it's successful that means more people play the game they stay in the game they enjoy them more people enjoy the game more people enjoy the game in different ways and magic is such a diverse card game that is full of coolness and adventure that i just want more people to enjoy it i'll be uh, i'll be running for for miss mr mr magic the gathering this year that, that's part of my speech i guess Demon of Catastrophes. All right, two more packs. Two more packs, guys. This is a pretty good box. I'd say this this box was, was pretty good. Pretty good box. Success. Um, so I'm going to take a break. I'm going to open the store probably in about three or four hours here uh, when, when Josiah gets here. Ooh, Scape Chip. I will, I will open the rest of this case on stream. So keep an eye out for part two. Look, we got a Scape Shift. And a Foil Knight's Pledge? It's a sign! That card was the... the that's a sign! I don't know of what, but yeah. That's the thing. And the last pack, guys. Lightning Mare. Love it. A Giant's Pride Mate. And a Magistrate Scepter. Do you like casting... Uh, do you like taking extra turns? Do you? Do you? Okay. Magistrate Scepter may be the card for you. You heard it here first, folks. All right, I'm gonna take a. We're gonna take a look at these cards, and uh, my phone died, so I'm gonna go over and take a look at chat really quick. Bolus is such a fun-looking card, but I removed it so easily with my removal spells because it starts out as a creature. They were so excited to play it, then play it tapped out when I liches caress it. Yeah, started playing again right before Tom took a break after uh, onslaught. Oh, right on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Welcome, welcome, Monster Chaz. But yeah, Nicobolus. Nicobolus is a fun card. You're correct, and he is easy to remove. That's that's the argument. That's the argument I've heard from most players um, when they when they uh, talk about Nicobolus is that he he's cool, but at four toughness and like high priority kill me, he dies pretty quickly. Your opponent will do pretty much anything they can to make sure that that card does not live. Our mythics were pretty good out of here. We got an Ajani. Out of three boxes, by the way, no Sarkin. We got an Ajani, uh, a bad dragon, as I like to call him. Bad dragon, bone dragon. Another Nicobolus. This is the most uh, frequent mythic I think we've seen, actually. Um, Omniscience. And another Scape Shift. So, love Omniscience, love pulling Omniscience. A lot of people want Scape Shift. A lot of people want Nicobolus. Um, if you are looking to buy Nicobolises, I feel, I personally feel like this card is a little bit high on TCG market right now, and you may want to wait. All right, guys. Um, like I said, join me a little bit later today where I'll be opening the rest of this case for part two case opening. I have to clean up here a little bit and then run over and open my store because, uh, it's running late. So thanks for watching. Uh, have a, have a great day. And bye. Oh, yeah, Nicobolus is going to be great in Commander. Okay, bye.